face that this world has forgotten. Ooh, what is up guys and welcome of course to another episode of Who Was Really Bitter? And this time we're looking upon the two of grass and flying Pokemon, which is a very very unique typing, actually. Only be introduced, of course, yet again in this generation, being generation 7. But yeah, Tropius versus Jumpluff. Very, very cool matchup. Jumpluff, of course, been introduced in generation 2, and Tropius followed thereafter, generation 3. Tropius have been one of my favorite Pokemon of all times, actually, due to the introduction and being, of course, a dinosaur. It definitely helps. And uh, Jumpluff as a whole, definitely one of my favorite Pokemon in generation 2. Um, was tough to use in that generation, but it got a lot of buff since then, and its viability is definitely up there. Together with Tropius, actually, these two were introduced as one of the worst Pokemon in their generations, but due to, of course, how the generation has passed, they have gotten more viability onto them, and we can discuss here today which one of these I think really are better. So we're going to go over their set, ability, and move pool, and see, of course, which one is best. So before we do anything else, we're really going to talk about the typing, because the typing itself is known as Possibly one of the worst typing combinations in the game. Mainly because both grass and flying are bad defensively and combined, well, they start a shit show that really is, well, affecting their viability as of this day. Now, we only have, I do believe, like four Pokemon that have this typing, but of course, the Jump Love a series of Pokemon with those Hop, Skip, Bloom, and then we got Tropius. Shaman and Rowlet also have this, but Shaman, due to its rather strong speeds here, is not as well affected by it. It is definitely weak due to it, but its its viability is not necessarily affected due to superior removal and clearly stats. And of course, Rowlet did drop their secondary typing for Ghost, which I believe is a very, very smart move because as a whole, and sadly, this typing is terrible and it's no way really working around it. So subjectively, if you look at their stats, also just a rough down, there is nothing wrong with their stats. It's the typing that does keep them down in their tier that they are in today. But with that said though, they have a lot more viability going on to them, but we're going to go over the typing combination itself just to get a clear indication of why it's so bad. Now, we are immune since we're flying, we're immune to ground, we're strongly resist grass, which is always nice. And then we resist fighting and water, definitely believe that Keldeo and Polarath have a rough time naturally but as a whole here there really aren't that many resistances and even if so the combination itself does open it up for a lot of weaknesses we are now weak to fire flying poison rock and cores ice very weak to ice even is basically make eye shot even a major issue here and being then we're not a dragon typing we don't resist anything else we are definitely strongly weak here against a lot of things and just as a whole here being weak to rocks is not necessarily a good thing and um, yeah, a lot of just regular, usual moves that are combined with every typing really are weak here. And Tropius and Diablo does struggle with this, even though they have actually proper niche bulk. This bulk does not save them, of course, because of the typing itself. But I do believe we talked about enough of this, let's actually go over their stats. Now, these two Pokemon peaks at different things and are kind of in the middle ground with the rest. Uh, Tropius peak, of course, in its HP 99 base, which is um, kind of weird. Not going all the way 100 there, but 99 is fair enough. It's definitely a higher HP stats compared to Jump Plus 75. Then offensively, the attacks that were 68 versus 55, so Tropius are stronger here. Uh, defense, we see 83 on Tropius versus 70 on Jump Plus. Even here, Tropius stands out as a more bulkier variant together with, of course, already high uh, HP stats. And then we have special attack 72 versus 55. Yeah. Tropius also here are vastly superior in his special attack set, even though it is a low special attack, it still has a lot more than Jump Fluff. And then we come to the two things that does differentiate a bit, then that is of course special events, 87 on Tropius versus 95, but as stated, due to the HP stat, it is very clear that Tropius is more capable of taking hits due to its overarching theme of being bulkier, but Jump Fluff has a really strong peak here, and that is of course its speed here, 110 versus 51 today so there there is a lot of stats distributed in different categories here it's very clear that both tropius and jump love has basically the same base total but it's very clear also that jump plus majority is put in its speed and yeah it wins on two categories and being one that it definitely does peak at but as a whole tropius clearly is the bulkier pokemon and of course being more offensively capable than jump love by a stats alone so the last thing we have left is their abilities, and they actually are differentiating somewhat, but not necessarily a lot. 
Uh, the boat have access to chlorophyll, which of course raises their speed to of course, double the speed during sun. Clearly, jump love don't need that, but Tropius might very well use it to its advantage. Though there are other abilities that it could work a lot better with, being of course Harvest. Harvest is the natural better ability of Tropius, being of course able to uh, recapitulate actually on its berries that it's consumed, such of course being status with the Lumberry, you have a 50% chance uh, to actually cons uh, to get that berry back in the end of the turn, or if it's sun, you have a 100% chance of pulling that off. So Tropius has a rather strong ability here, we also have solar power, which also at the same time here works like life form, you are reduced by actually 12% of your HP in conjunction with actually getting a 33% boost in your damage output during sun. So it's very clear that Tropius is very dependent on the sun actually, if it's going to be capitalized on something, the sun is where it's at, though Harvest naturally is a very very strong ability, mainly because it still has a 50% chance of actually recovering a berry. Jump Plus Abilities are not necessarily that much more interesting than Tropius, but it does have a strong niche going on. Uh, Leaf Guard is definitely one that are not the niche here. Leaf Guard is basically that your your um, party's Pokemon cannot be status during strong sunlight in doubles. So yeah, not necessarily that interesting outside of VGC, and even at that, VGC do not use status that, that often actually outside of Thunder Wave. And even at that, that's not that common anymore. Now with that said, we have Infiltrator. Infiltrator basically hits uh, behind a sub, uh, no matter if you are a substitute or not, you will be able to land a hit or late seed. And also, other than that, we actually have capability of actually hitting through Reflect, Light Screen or of course Aurora Veal. So, Infiltrator is a very strong ability, mainly because it kind of works like the unaware to some extent that you are able to actually hit through the kind of easy pass and of course the easy screens and actually hit rather hard. Kind of unfortunate though we don't have that offensive attack size to pull that off, but it still has a very very capable and very good ability as a whole. But as you can see here, even in the ability side, Tropius stands out a little bit more, and mainly because of Harvest is a very good ability. Uh, but a Pokemon is only as strong as of course its move pool, and that's why we're gonna talk about their well move pool. So when it comes to their move pool, they actually do share a few moves, but they aren't definitely that much. These shared moves are not what define these Pokemon, which I do believe it's one of the first time we're actually doing this. Most of the time, the Pokemon do compare here has similar move pools, and it basically comes down to which one does the thing best. These two work differently, and it definitely should be considered, of course, the speeds here and stats overall. They should function differently, because if, if they hadn't, it would be very clear which one was better and uh, it would basically be a round of which one performs a certain role the best. But we are actually comparing two different roles here, and it becomes a much, much more interesting comparison due to that. So first of all, we're going to, of course, mention what they do share. Uh, the Bogodax is the likes of Leech Seed, we have Setup Moves in Sword Stats, we have Recovery in Stasis, and we have the Grass Stabs and, of course, Solar Beam and Energy Ball. They actually don't share Flying Stats, which is great outside of Gust. Ew. But yeah, that's pretty much where it all ends, and we're gonna actually go over Jump Plus stats first, or it's not stats, but Move Pool. Hey, stats were always compared that already, but Move Pool, which is one of the more interesting ones actually in the meta, consider of course what this Pokemon is. Because Jump Plus is very flexible as a Pokemon as a whole, uh, we have of course one of the more interesting moves, because it's able to pivot with U-Turn, and that's a very very strong move for it. Other than that, we have Memento, which is now with C Memento, a very very good ability to be able to actually capitalize on and Moment, of course, reduce the stats of its opposing Pokemons, and you pass your on to the next opponent or the next party member. With C Memento, you're able to actually recover that Pokemon too. So being having a strong speed here, that's, that's kind of sweet, actually. We also have Cutting Guard, which raises your defense by three. We have um, different kind of spore moves in Sleep Powder, Stun Spore, and one of the more interesting ones being actually Acrobatics. Acrobatic as a whole might not look the part, but being that we are speedier, we're able to infiltrate, we're able to substitute, we're able to reduce our HP kind of nicely due to being faster than most opponents, Acrobatics does withstand as one of the stronger niche moves for it, and it has a decent bolt to be able to set up a sword stance, and since it's already fast enough, Acrobatics can be a tremendous asset for the team. And they will also have the likes of actually Encore, which definitely could enforce that you can set up with of course the likes of um, Sword Stands. We also have Enjoy from the Capitalize, once Capitalize on Salak Barry, anything like that, to boost your speed. We also have Aromatherapy and Amnesia uh, to be able to even get Bolt here together with of course the likes of Cutting Garl already. 
But there is pretty much where it all ends. We also get the likes of Seed Bomb, we capitalize on that, and Bounce if you want to have something like that. But as a whole, this is all that Jump Love does get. But as stated, while the movie itself isn't the broadest in the game, it's a very, very, very specific one. It can capitalize on a few roles here really, really nicely. As a setup sweeper, as a supporter, or as a Neuer, it does these actually roles really well. And it's really unfortunate that it is a flying grass type because this combination of moves is more annoying than you might think. Tropius move pool is a very strange one because we have a lot of moves, all of them are not viable, but all of them could be working to a niche. Tropius has probably one of the broadest move pools in the game, but due to its typing is not so well rounded. But trust me when I say this, it's a very interesting move pool as a whole. Now, with that said, we're going to, of course, mention, of course, its primary stabs, because outside of, of course, the likes of um, um, the Energy Ball Solar Beam, we also get Leaf Storm, which capitalizes on even a stronger special attacking move, but we also have the likes of Leaf Tornado, which reduces the accuracy of the opponent, and we have Flying Stabs here that are a bit more interesting. While we do like the acrobatics that uh, Jump Love is getting, we do get Air Slash and get Fly. Both of these moves might not sound as the most interesting one, but they are at least Flying Stabs. Uh, what I forgot to forget, forgot to say, Hale, is that we get Natural Gift from this Pokemon. And Natural Gift might not sound that interesting as a whole, but due to Harvest, we are able to actually get back our Berry. And Lumberry is basically an 80 base fly move here with the physical side, which becomes 1 in 20. And of course, a Lancet Berry. Lancet Berry is probably the one I would capitalize on because it does is a 100 base flying stab. And with, of course, the stabs, you might get 150. So it's a very, very strong move, and we're able to recover that berry. And if your, of course, HP is pushed down to the limit, you could get a 2 raise into critical hit ratio, which is very, very interesting. We also have on the supporting side with the likes of Whirlwind, and um, we got Bestow, which basically is you can pass your berry to your opponent if you want to capitalize on that, of course. Other than that, we have actually Roost, which outside of, of course, the Zizis, Roost actually does make sure that you lose your flying typing, which could be very good, actually, because it means that you lose a few of your weaknesses. In exchange for getting a few more, definitely would also get a few more resistances, because Grass typing does resist a few more things that are definitely kind of nice, and not being able to Roost and get hit by Earthquake and be resistant to that, yeah, that's kind of sweet, actually. We also have in setup moves, we have Curse, but that's not the most important one. The most important one is Dragon Dance. Dragon Dance basically pushed the borders of this Pokemon really can be, because it is naturally slower, clearly. But being able to set up one or two Dragon Dances ensures that your Roost will make sure that you are faster and can defensively. Since your Arlen are that naturally bulky, you can capitalize on that really naturally. And that's really good. That's one of the best things about Tropius is that when it's able to actually outspeed things, it becomes impossible to kill. We also have Tailwind, and we have one of the strongest, of course, physical grass moves to be in Leaf Blade, which is only pushing the boundaries of what Tropius really can be. We also have a filler move in like Earthquake, which definitely does help this Pokemon quite a lot. It's very clear that Tropius could physically become much, much more interesting than Jump Love because it has a lot of filler moves that does work around. We also have Dragon Pulse when we capitalize on that. We have uh, Outrage when we capitalize on that too. And if you want to have it a more defensive side, we actually have the likes of Defog to be able to, of course, capitalize of getting away the hassles. But as a whole, I would say the Dragon Dance set is what makes Tropius a much, much more interesting Pokemon here as a whole. And it's very clear that it can do a heavy amount of damage output. We also have, I should mention Body Slam and Steel when we capitalize on that, but trust me, they are not interesting for this dialogue because it's very clear that you want to capitalize on the natural gifts to be able to do a massive amount of damage. So with all this said, it is very clear that Jump Bluff is functional turn 1 and it's able to set up really nicely. It does have a supportive side with Encore, U-turn with Pivoting. It is a very, very strong Pokemon as a whole and can become quite annoying if you can't hit it. Tropius on the other side, bulkier, more offensively capable, and actually due to proper setup moves can become really scary a few turns in. And of course with a broader move pool, it does deal well with a lot a lot of matchup naturally, actually. And together with of course its defensive capabilities, it is also defensively more capable than Jump Love. So everything points that of course Tropius should be deemed the superior one here, because as a whole, Tropius is vastly superior in every category here, besides one. And this is sadly what it all gonna boils down to. 
The speed here does ensure that Jump Club is good turn 1. And while it, it doesn't sound like a big thing, we still are, and I really can't stress this enough, of terrible typing. Tropius, while exceptional in so many ways, and so good, and definitely, like I said, stated before, one of my favorite Pokemons of all time. I can't deny this very fact. It has a terrible typing. It is not necessarily able to set up all the time. Jump Bluff can work around this function turn one as long as there is an ice shot on the field or a possible Scarfer. Jump Bluff is fast enough to ruin a team naturally. Tropius does not have that, and together with, of course, being that it's slow and has a lot of weaknesses, it is, while bulky, not able to take that many hits due to most of things does hurt it super effectively. And since they're both weak to rocks, it's very clear, sadly, that while Tropius has more stamina, more bulk, more offensive prowess, Jump Love can perform its role naturally, and this is something that, sadly, Tropius can naturally do. While it does win most of the matchup, if they have luck to, if it is able to set up, it is the stronger Mon here. But as a whole, Jumpluff must win this matchup, and it all boils down to that it is speedy enough to avoid possible issues. I won't deny it though, I really, really wanted Tropius to win this one, mainly because it is so incredible in so many ways, but it all boils down to functions and the typing, and it this type of combination is the same as Ice, basically. That is, that, that speed or ice typing is usually what makes it viable. Had it been slow, it, it would defensively become incapable of doing anything, and they fall into the same category. And when it boils down to it, it's basically the jump of is speed enough to avoid possible issues, while Tropius will always face them. And it's unfortunate, because Tropius is an incredible Pokemon, but so clearly is jump love. And while it isn't the most niche Pokemon in this kind of environment, it is still a very capable one at that. That said though, are you able to set up with Tropius? It is a tremendous threat. It is so hard to deal with. If you can't outspeed it, you can't win against it basically outside of course possible eye shot. It is bulky enough to pull off a few of these certain roles, but it needs to set up. Jump Love simply didn't need it. And that's why it wins this matchup basically. So with that said guys, what do you guys think of these two Pokemon? Do you think it was fair here? Uh, I definitely think I oversold Tropius to some extent there, just because I love it so much. So, with that, guys, join us next week where we're gonna look upon these apes. <laughs>